Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, my latest video, we're going to talk about how much protein can you absorb at a meal? Now, this is a question I hear a lot from people. And uh, typically, <laughs> well, let's start out with, with the first thing. They don't, they're not asking the right question, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, but I hear this question a lot. Um, how much protein can I absorb at a meal? Well, first off, we really have to define absorption, okay? So absorption is the process by which you ingest food, it travels through the GI tract, and is absorbed into circulation. Those nutrients are absorbed, all right? So in the case of protein, we're talking about amino. It's going to be chopped into mono di tripeptides, those sorts of things, and those are going to enter circulation to your li they're going to go to your liver first and then going to get a chance in the bloodstream if whatever the liver and planktonic tissues don't take okay as far as absorption goes there's almost an unlimited amount of protein you can have at a meal and absorb okay um, absorption is really only limited by inherent factors in a protein um, so for example uh, uncooked eggs so raw eggs um, the colloidal nature of the egg is such that um, uncooked eggs are much less digestible than cooked eggs but for things like you know whey protein eggs cooked eggs um, meat uh, even wheat and soy uh, there's there are some phytates in soy that can sometimes reduce digestibility but it's still over 90 percent okay so most protein sources are going to be over 90 percent digestible okay in the case of something like whey it's almost a hundred percent now that being said um, when you eat a, a large quantity of protein what can change is the not the rate of absorption there's kind of a fixed rate of absorption okay but if you if you eat a ton of protein like let's say you ate 100 grams of protein you're going to absorb all of it it's just going to take it a long time to be all absorbed okay and actually what the body does is um, i hear a lot of people say well if you excess protein you just poop it out you pee it out well not much ends up in feces um, most of it is of excess is in urine and that is in the form of urea which is a nitrogen disposal uh, compound and what happens is you can only dispose of so much urea per unit time and free or you can only form so much urea per unit time and free ammonia is toxic so what will happen is if you eat a really large protein meal your body since it can only uh, form so much urea so fast will actually slow down digestion so that you can form urea at a rate to dispose of the nitrogen without causing toxicity like your body's not gonna let you die from protein intake so um, if you've ever had a really high protein meal and you feel very bloated very sluggish that's probably one of the reasons uh, other than just the pure volume of food so what are I said they're asking the wrong question when they say how much protein can I absorb what are they really asking well most people I think what they're asking is how is that protein utilized right like how much protein is beneficial for muscle building so we can look at this one of two ways we can look at how much of that protein is actually used as a substrate for um, building muscle for growing uh, for growing muscle well from a substrate perspective it's probably only about five to ten grams per day okay so you can look at it as be like one or two grams per meal and that's if you're optimizing muscle mass okay um, so that's not to say that all you need is one or two grams of protein in a meal that's not the case um, I guess you could say well all you need is one or two grams extra above your baseline needs but that's also not the case because in order to optimize the rate of muscle deposition you have to optimize the rate of muscle protein synthesis okay to maximize the rate of muscle protein synthesis requires a disproportionate amount of protein compared to what is actually used as substrate okay so where you might only need an extra gram or two of amino acids to form that growing peptide chain um, you're going to need you know an extra 10 20 grams 30 grams depending on your source of protein to increase the rate of muscle protein synthesis to get that deposition of that extra one or two grams okay so it's a disproportionate response 
Um, now, how much protein are we talking about? That's that's what really people want to know. Like, how much protein is beneficial for muscle building in a meal? Well, we think that the that leucine, the amino acid leucine, is really kind of the um, the trigger for muscle protein synthesis, and is responsible for approximately about 70% of the anabolic effects of a meal, and most of the anabolic effects of protein. And so, uh, it looks like the the, the that protein synthesis is maxed out around three grams of leucine at a meal. You might, some people will argue it's closer to four. Fine, I'm, I'm not gonna, if you wanna have a safety net and you wanna go more towards the four, that's fine. Um, so how much leucine is in protein sources? Well, it depends on the protein source. If you're talking about something like whey, whey is around 11 or 12% leucine. Um, and so when you've got a source like that, um, you're gonna need much less. You might only need 25 grams of whey protein to maximize muscle protein synthesis, 25 or 30 grams. Or you're talking about something like uh, chicken or casein or, or beef, uh, soy, those are 8%, so you're gonna need closer to 40 or 45 grams, depending on how much leucine you're targeting. And then if you're talking about something like wheat, like wheat gluten, you're gonna need like over 50 grams. So. Um, depending on your protein source and the quality of that source, it's going to depend on how much you're going to require to maximize that muscle protein synthesis. Now, the other perspective is utilization of that protein, how much is going towards substrate, like we talked about, versus gluconeogenesis. Okay, so gluconeogenesis is the process by which the liver converts non-glucose substrates into, into glucose. And about 60% of amino acids are gluconeogenic. They can be converted from protein to glucose. And if you eat a high protein meal, um, you'll get a large amount of, or high protein diet, you'll get a large amount of protein or amino acids being converted to glucose. Okay, and people will look at that and say, well, you're getting increased oxidation of amino acids and that means you're wasting those amino acids. I think that's the improper perspective to have. Even if you oxidize the amino acid, even if it's not actually going into a peptide chain, if that amino acid triggers anabolic signaling before it's oxidized, it's still having a net positive benefit, even though it might not actually wind up in your actual muscle tissue. So. I realize I'm kind of talking high-level muscle protein metabolism here, but hopefully you guys are, are getting the perspective that I'm talking about. Uh, I think the long story short is, even though it might only require a small amount of extra protein, it requires a disproportionately large amount of protein to trigger the response that will accumulate that uh, those amino acids in muscle. So that's kind of my perspective on uh, how much protein can you absorb at a meal. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, today I am releasing my, uh, obviously, uh, shameless plug, <laughs> I'm releasing my uh, Carbon Build, which is a whey protein isolate. It has, it is one of the highest sources of leucine there is. It's over 12% leucine. Um, very, very low carbohydrate, very, very low fat, under one gram. Um, uh, very tasty and uh, 24 grams of protein per serving. Um, it's nothing super fancy. It is a high quality whey protein, very low carb, very low, low fat that tastes very, very good. I'm confident we're gonna be the best place tasting protein on the market and is at a competitive price. So if you're in the market for a new protein that tastes great and like I said, low carb, low fat, um, high leucine content, very anabolic, then I would, uh, suggest you giving carbon build a try and uh, if you guys get a chance to try it and you want to leave uh, feedback in the comments here I'd appreciate it um, if you don't you just have questions obviously feel free to have those questions there um, and uh, in the meantime you can check me out on my website biolane.com thanks guys